my channel if you're new here my name's Meg welcome and if you're returning then welcome back for today's video I am going to be starting a new story time series the last one that I did was all about my first love my first proper relationship and all that jazz if you want to watch that story time I will link it down below along with all of my other story times that I have on this channel today's one is going to be about my second serious relationship that I got into and unfortunately it was a very controlling relationship, it was a very emotionally abusive relationship and I mean I don't regret it because if I hadn't been in that relationship then I wouldn't know the warning signs to look out for when people are like this particular boy that I'm going to talk about. It wasn't the best relationship to get into straight after I'd already had my heart broken. Before I start the story I'm just going to give my normal disclaimer that I don't make these videos because I like talking about the past or I'm still bitter or anything like that. I don't still care about anyone that I talk about. I purely do it for educational purposes because I know that in situations in my life where I've been going through heartbreak it would have really helped me if I'd come onto YouTube and seen a girl that has been through the same thing as me and seen how she handled it and you know also been able to look at her and think she's okay so I'm going to be okay so that's why I do it there's no other reason other than that I don't want it to come across like I'm disrespecting anyone that I talk about I always use fake names I never use anyone's real name unless they are a friend of mine that I still have that wouldn't mind their real name being used but other than that I disguise everybody's identity and also I have spoken to my what current boyfriend about making these story times he doesn't mind he has absolutely no issue with it so yeah I just say as well a massive thank you for all of the love that I received on my part four to my first love story time really really appreciate everyone's comments everyone's messages obviously it was a bit of a difficult video to film and I didn't think I was going to get upset because it was so long ago but obviously I did just because I was talking about it and I knew that it was going to go out to the internet for everyone to see but I am okay, like I'm I'm honestly fine, I'm not still affected by what happened to me. Well, I wouldn't say that I'm not still affected, but like I, I can talk about it normally without getting upset, it doesn't normally upset me. But yeah, I just wanted to say thank you all so much for your lovely comments and your support, it really does mean a lot. Without further ado, let's get straight into the story time. So I'm going to take you back to 2011, so 10 years ago. I had actually just broken up with my first boyfriend. Um, I mean, if you've watched my previous story time series, then you'll know the kind of timeline of this. But if you haven't watched that, basically, I was in a relationship with a boy for over a year of my life. It ended quite badly. And after we broke up, I went through something quite horrific, which I'm not going to go into detail about in this video because I already talked about it in my last story time. And there's just no need to relive it, really. So after this situation happened, I was in a very vulnerable place I guess, I mean it took me a good week or so to go back to school after this thing happened and I think when I did go back I kind of felt very exposed, like I felt like I almost needed someone to protect me if you know what I mean because obviously I was now single, everyone was talking about me and yeah I mean I don't get me wrong I wasn't at all looking for another relationship like I was not ready for another boyfriend I was still getting over my ex-boyfriend and in no way shape or form did I think I'm gonna get straight into another relationship in general I don't work like that like when I break up with someone I, I don't I'm not one of those people who just jumps into another relationship nothing wrong with people that do do that but personally I don't understand how people can do that I need time to heal when I've broken up with someone but in this scenario I am one of those people so there was a boy called we'll call him Rick so Rick was a guy that was in quite a few of my classes in school in particular art and he was sat like one seat away from me in art so it was me my friend who I'll call Claire because I've talked about her before and called her Claire and then Rick was on the other side of Claire and we were like a three like every time we had art together we would like talk to each other and kind of work together I guess but Rick was and I hate saying this because it makes me cringe this this saying but Rick was one of the popular boys in my school he was in that big group of boys and girls you know the girls are all bitches and no one likes them and the boys are all considered like the most attractive men you've ever seen in your life Obviously I was friends with Rick but never did I think that it would be anything more than that mainly because I just thought someone like him would never be interested in me because I was one of those girls in school who like I wasn't unpopular in a sense that I had no friends I had friends but I wasn't a very well liked person in high school and I always think that that's because I always just went against the kind of stereotype for my 
age and my gender, I guess. I didn't necessarily act like, I mean, I don't want to say I didn't act like a woman because I think a woman should be able to act however she wants. I think women should be able to have sex with as many people as they want and do whatever they want without being judged for it because that's what men do. As long as you're being safe, you know, you're not getting pregnant, you're not getting STIs. I think women can do what they fucking want, to be honest. But because I was always under the impression that like, I'm gonna just do what I want and I don't care what anyone thinks, I wasn't a very well-liked person because of that, which at the time I struggled with, but now when I look back, I'm glad that I made such an impression on everyone's lives. So yeah, I never thought Rick would be interested in me and it wasn't a case of like, I fancied him. I Obviously I thought he was attractive, but I never was like, I fancy Rick, I really wanna go out with him. Every time me and my ex-boyfriend broke up, cause we did break up quite a few times, Rick would always sort of say to me like, you're too good for him, like you shouldn't take him back this time, blah, blah, blah. And obviously every time, but obviously the last time that we broke up, I did take him back. And Rick would always kind of express his, not disgust, but like he'd be a bit like, well, I think you've made a mistake sort of thing, which I never found weird really because everyone had an opinion on me and my ex's relationship because it was so turbulent. And I mean, obviously Rick was my friend, not one of my good friends. He's not someone that I would have met up with like outside of school. I only ever really spoke to him when we were in class together. But yeah, a lot of people, especially my friends, said that I shouldn't have taken back my ex and all that. So I didn't really see it as him being harsh. I just saw it as people have their opinions. You know, people are always going to have opinions. That's just life, unfortunately. You might not always agree with them, but yeah. It's been about, I'm gonna say it's been about a month and maybe maybe a, a little bit longer than a month. So I'm gonna say about six weeks it's been since me and my ex-boyfriend who I'll call Harry, cause I called him that in the whole story time about him. It's been about six weeks since we've broken up. And as I said, I was feeling very vulnerable and there was a particular day when I was at school and I basically found out that my ex had gotten with this girl that he told me not to worry about when we were together. You know the drill girls, that girl, they always tell you not to worry about, they always end up getting with them after you've broken up. And I don't know why it upset me so much. It didn't really upset me, I was just angry because I was like, of all the people, you know, like, I, I was still quite hurt by this boy even though we'd been broken up for six weeks I was with him for over a year of my life and he was my first love so I was still hurt by what he'd done and every time I felt like I was kind of getting over him I would just hear something new like this boy in particular did cheat on me but I never really knew who it was that he cheated on me with but after we broke up like in the weeks after we broke up I just kept finding things out like for example I found out that one of the girls he cheated on me with was one of my friends and it, it was just one thing after the other, like it really just was getting me down. And on this particular day, I found out this information and I ended up screaming at my ex-boyfriend in the middle of the maths block. Highly embarrassing, I wouldn't recommend. And I actually, the worst thing about this was I was walking and arguing, like I refused to stand and talk to him. I was like walking past him. And as I was walking past him, I lost my shoe, like my shoe came off. So I actually had to turn back around, walk back towards him, put my shoe on and then carry on walking away so embarrassing like even to this day i'm like megan why did you do that <laughs> yeah i was upset for the rest of the day really and i remember rick coming up to me and being like are you okay and i was like yeah i'm just a bit angry i've just found something out about my ex and it just feels like it's one after the other blah 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 anyway so i went home that day and obviously i was a bit deflated i felt a bit sad that day and i get a message on facebook off of rick asking me if i want to go to prom with him which at this point prom was not soon. I mean, it was soon, prom was in June and we were in February at this point, or maybe like the end of January sort of time. So, you know, people were starting to think about prom, but it wasn't like it was like next week. And obviously after me and my ex had broken up, I kind of just assumed I'd be going to prom with my friends. I wouldn't have a date, but Rick asked me and I'm sat there like, I can't believe he's asked me. Like he could honestly have had any girl in that school. All the girls fancy to him. I was kind of, honoured that he was choosing me but at the same time there was always a part of me that kind of thought he was doing it as a joke which sounds awful but because I was such a disliked person and because he was a popular boy I just felt like that's something that they would do he wasn't joking he genuinely did want to take me to prom but I think there was always a part of me that was quite like I, I just didn't trust men and if you've seen my previous story time you'll understand why but I was really like honoured that he was asking me and so I said yes of course I did I mean I, it's better than going to prom by yourself isn't it and also at this point 
Harry, my ex, had kind of started seeing someone else and I just assumed he'd be going to prom with her, which was kind of stupid to assume because this particular girl that he was seeing was actually two years below us at school, so she wouldn't have been going to prom anyway. Um, but yeah, I was kind of just a bit like, you know, it'll, it'll be one up to my ex really if I turn up to prom with a popular guy, you know? And it's such a materialistic way of thinking, like, if I don't want to go to prom with someone I should have just said no, no matter who they are, but back then I kind of just wanted that security, I wanted my ex to see me move on because he'd never really seen me move on before. I think after everything that happened as well, he probably expected me to just be sad and moping around all the time so the worst thing about this relationship was the fact that it was so soon after my ex and because of that i always treated rick like not even a rebound but i almost treated him like a i don't even know what the word is but i i, I guess everything that i did with rick was always so that I could say ha ha to my ex, you know, which is so wrong and I don't recommend it. And this is why I always say that people shouldn't jump from relationship to relationship because you quite often end up having that mindset like, oh, I wonder what my ex thinks or blah, blah, blah. I don't give a shit what my ex-boyfriend thinks. My most recent ex, this is one that I haven't talked about before. I couldn't give a shit what he thinks about my life right now. He probably doesn't care anyway, but like, do you know what I mean? I don't, when I'm with my boyfriend, I don't think, oh, I wonder what my ex thinks. I couldn't give a shit. And that's why I always say you have to properly get over someone before you start getting into something with someone else. Because if anything, it's just not fair on the other person. It's not fair on you and it's not fair on the other person. Anyway, so I said yes to this prom invite. I mean, at the time I was kind of thinking it might not happen. Like we might not end up going to prom together. And also I, at the time, I just thought it was a prom invitation. I didn't think that it was gonna amount to anything. You know, I thought he was just being nice. I thought he was just like, making me feel better after the shit day that I'd had. So I said yes to going to prom with him. And that le then kind of led to us talking quite a lot on Facebook Messenger. And it kind of got to a point where Rick was like, do you wanna do something this weekend? And still I'm thinking this isn't gonna amount to anything. He's just being a good friend. Um, anyway, there was this one weekend where Rick came around my house and we literally just sat in my room and watched TV all day. We didn't really do anything. Nothing happened either. It wasn't like that. It wasn't uh, Netflix and chill. It was genuinely, we were actually watching TV. Rick was kind of talking to me quite a lot. Like we were talking to each other every day on Facebook and obviously he'd been around my house and I was basically due to go to this, I don't want to call it a rave because I was never a raver, I never went to raves, but I was basically going to this like underage kind of neon disco type thing with one of my friends or I was meant to be going and there was a guy going as well that I knew that I like had always got on with. I told Rick about it, I said you know I'm going to this thing and Rick was kind of like oh well are you going to get with any boys while you're there? And I mean, that wasn't why I was going, was it? I was going because I was going out with my friend to have a good night. It, I wasn't going there thinking I'm gonna get with the, all the boys there. I didn't really care about that at this point in my life, to be honest. I just wanted to go and have a good time with my friend. So I can't sort of said to Rick, I was like, I'm not going there to do that. But if the opportunity arises, I'm not gonna say no, because I'm single, I can do what I want. And Rick, at this point, this is the point as well where I should have realized what type of person he was. But because I'd never had experience with someone like him before, I didn't realise it at the time. But Rick was basically like, well, I don't want you getting with anyone else. Like, I really like you and I'll be really annoyed if you get with someone else. And let's just bear in mind, okay, that we've never had the conversation of we're seeing each other, we're exclusive to each other. We've literally just been talking on Facebook for a couple of weeks, probably not even that at this point. It was maybe like a week or something like that. He's been around my house once. He didn't even take me on a date. He just came to my house to watch TV. And that's what made me think it was casual. That's what made me think he's just being a friend because he wasn't like, I want to take you out for dinner or anything like that. I'm a bit like, why is he suddenly dictating to me what I can and can't do when we're not even like seeing each other exclusively? I don't get that. So I sort of said to him, I was like, okay, I understand what you're saying, but you've never really said that to me before. And also... I am newly single, I don't want to be tied down to someone else straight away. Not because I wanted to go out and get with people, it wasn't like that, it was just the case of I wasn't over my ex-boyfriend and I didn't want to commit myself to somebody else just yet. Bearing in mind, we'd literally been broken up for just over a month, like, I don't think anyone can blame me for not being ready to 
commit to somebody else you know i was a bit like taken aback by it i was like why is he telling me what i can and can't do like he's, he's just a friend to me like there's nothing in it i actually didn't end up going to this neon disco thing not because of rick just because i think it got cancelled or for whatever reason i didn't end up going to it so rick could rest easy that i didn't go we kind of started seeing each other a bit more and obviously after he told me that he liked me it kind of became something else when we were seeing each other like it felt like it wasn't just friends anymore i think in my head i was thinking if i go out with somebody else it'll help me get over my ex um and also it'll make it will just make me look good i was looking at this whole thing from a very materialistic point of view i was looking at it as in i'm a very hated person at school if i go out with rick it's gonna give me some like street cred you know it's gonna make me seem like a much better person than everyone thinks i am because why would he be with me sort of thing i'm absolutely not glorifying the way i was thinking about this by the way but i do want to tends to want to be honest in these story times i know that this doesn't paint me in a very good light but i want to be honest with you all and show you what can happen when you try and jump into something so soon after a relationship you know rick was in my opinion much better looking than my ex-boyfriend he was in much better shape he was one of those gym goers like he had big arm muscles and he wore bloody tank tops and honestly in this day and age get them people away from me i have absolutely no interest in men like that but back then he was someone that like i'd never had someone of his i don't even know what the word is i'd never had someone of his that looked like him that fancied me you know and also like i said my ex was sort of getting into a new relationship with this girl that was like 13 years old which to this day makes me feel a bit sick but it, i don't know why he was ever interested in a girl that young i know he was only 16 himself but i just find that a bit odd i didn't want to be like the ex-girlfriend that was still on her own do you know what i mean i didn't want to be the one moping around i didn't want to look like the sad case that had been cheated on and broken up with and now he'd moved on and i was still kind of upset over it it got to a point where it was valentine's day was coming up and i don't know if anyone's ever been seeing someone around valentine's day but it is so awkward trying to like figure out what you're going to do for it if you're not actually in a relationship with that person he'd never taken me out at this point the only time we'd spent together is he'd come around my house a few times and that was it so rick was like i want to take you out for valentine's day and he booked a meal at this like all you can eat place and then we were going to the cinema after to watch the black swan and the only reason i remember that is just i just found it hilarious that we were watching a horror film on valentine's day and at the end of the night he asked me to be his girlfriend and i said yes and i was happy but not like it, i should have been absolutely ecstatic you know when like you're dating someone and you really like them and they finally ask you out and you're really happy like i was with my current boyfriend when he asked me to be his girlfriend i kind of felt like when we first started going out i mean i know that obviously when you first start going out with someone it's new anyway but i always just kind of felt like i didn't really know him that well considering he was my boyfriend and i obviously didn't because if i had known what type of person he was i would never have gotten into a relationship with him but obviously like people that are like him don't show other people what they're like it's all behind closed doors sort of thing i'm gonna tell you about the first occasion that i realized that not even realized because i didn't realize at the time but the first occasion that i guess he upset me with something that he said so he was coming over one evening um obviously my mum had already met him but my mum's best friend was around um she's still her best friend to this day as well and she'd never met him before i mean predominantly he was obviously coming around to see me but i was going to introduce him to my mum's friend as well so i spent ages like making myself look nice i did my hair and makeup and i put on like a top and some denim shorts i thought i looked nice um and i thought you know oh he's gonna love it like he's gonna think i look really nice sort of thing and I opened the door to him and he laughed in my face and went, you look hilarious. And I mean, I wasn't trying to look hilarious. I was trying to look nice. If I'd opened the door wearing a clown costume, maybe I would have understood the you look hilarious comment. But he almost said it as in a way like, it was almost like he was saying it as in like I tried too hard or like I didn't suit whatever I was wearing. Or, And I kind of just went like, what do you mean I look hilarious? I've just... I've just spent ages trying to look nice for you and you've I've opened the door to you and you've said I look hilarious so then he came in and I ended up introducing him to my mum's friend in quite a 
I guess, annoyed way because he just said that to me and I was really taken aback by it. With my ex-boyfriend, he was always very complimentary of me and my body and whenever I would make an effort, he would always compliment me. So it was very, like, unheard of. Not in a, like, a stuck-up way, like, I want every boy to think I look nice, but your own boyfriend, you'd expect them to compliment you when you've clearly made an effort for them. He didn't admit that he'd done anything wrong, he didn't apologise or anything, we just ended up having... I don't know, I don't even know what we did that night, to be honest. The thing about this relationship is I don't remember an awful lot about the actual relationship. And I think it's because I blocked a lot of it out, to be honest, because I was very, very unhappy when I was in this relationship, which you'll realise as I get on with the story. I mainly remember after we broke up, everything that happened after we broke up, which, to be honest, is the most interesting part of the story, but I have to sort of start from the beginning and tell you about the relationship as well. Anyway, Rick basically said to me quite early on in our relationship we'd only been together for like a month at this point and he basically wanted my passwords I say passwords we only really used Facebook at this point in our lives obviously like Instagram and all that didn't exist back then so he basically wanted my Facebook password um I don't know or I didn't know why obviously now I know it was because he wanted to keep an eye on me even though I'd never given him a reason to think that he needed to keep an eye on me you know it's not like I was the one that cheated on my ex-boyfriend I, I got cheated on I didn't cheat so I was a bit like why why do you need to check up on me I'm not going to do anything like, I'm not that kind of person so I was like okay well you can have mine but then I want yours too because you know it's not it's not you can have mine but I can't have yours sort of thing so we had each other's Facebook passwords which can I just say is never a good sign in a relationship it's so toxic to be checking up on each other i'm not saying like you shouldn't know your boyfriend's passcode on his phone or whatever but you know having each other's social media password especially when you've literally been together for five minutes it's a bit bizarre um but obviously with m me and my ex-boyfriend we knew each other's p facebook passwords but it wasn't with us it was just a case of we just knew each other's passwords because we had the same password for everything it wasn't a case of we sat down and went right let's take each other's passwords it just kind of happened, you know, he would used to go on my laptop to go on Facebook and I would go on his and that's how we ended up knowing each other's passwords. But we never really checked up on each other, me and my ex, before Rick. Um, obviously, I started checking up on him after he cheated on me, but before that, we were never really, like, checking up on each other. Whereas with Rick, it was a case of, right, let's have a conversation about having each other's social media passwords. The problem with that was Rick would check up on me every single day and if a, a boy messaged me literally just saying hello, Rick would go off on one. He would message me and be like, why the fuck is he messaging you? Tell him to fuck off. Looking back and obviously now that I'm more clued up on things like this, I'm very aware that Rick was very controlling and didn't want me to receive any attention from men which I mean I wouldn't want my boyfriend to receive attention from women but that wasn't even attention it was literally just someone saying hello to me and I would never have entertained a you know I would never have flirted with somebody else when I was in a relationship I would have understood it if this guy was messaging me being like you're so fit like I, I really want to take you out I want to do this I want to do that then I'd probably understand it a bit more but he literally just said hello it was very bizarre it was a massive overreaction from Rick and I would always kind of be like, so I'm not even allowed to like speak to another guy, even if it's one of my friends. And he would kind of always kind of make out like I wasn't allowed to do that. So I'm obviously checking up on his Facebook as well, because I was kind of just doing it in retaliation, to be honest, because he was doing it to me every single day and having a go at me because someone messaged me when it's not my fault. And obviously I'd be ignoring these boys that were messaging me. Not that there was like an array of boys that were messaging me, but literally any boy, even boys that were my friends that messaged me, I just wouldn't reply to them because I'd be too scared that Rick was going to get annoyed with me for it. Anyway, there was this girl who we'll call Leah. And she was, again, she was like a young girl. She was maybe a couple of years below us at school. She didn't actually go to our school, so I didn't know her personally, but I just knew that she was younger, like 13, 14 sort of thing. So this Leo girl used to always message Rick and she actually was flirting with him. Like she would say stuff like, you're so fit. And I always kind of felt very irritated by it, partly because he's my boyfriend. I don't want other girls flirting with my boyfriend. But mainly I think because he was so like against me having a single conversation with any man, even that wasn't flirty, 
yet he was there allowing this girl to flirt with him because it wasn't like he was saying you know don't say stuff like that you're crossing the line he was lapping up the attention he wasn't necessarily flirting back i wouldn't say but he was like taking the compliment and all that and if i had done that he would have gone mental so i was a bit like I'm not accepting this because you wouldn't accept this from me sort of thing. I said to him like, I'm not very happy about this girl messaging you. Like she always flirts with you and like you always have a go at me when a boy literally messages me saying hello or how are you? Yet yeah, you're allowed to have a girl saying that to you. And he would always be like, well, yeah, but I'm not flirting back. And I'd be like, well, I'm not even being flirted with to be able to flirt back, but I'm still not allowed to message men. So you're not allowed to message her. And you know, I ha I hate being that girlfriend that's like, don't message her, don't follow her, blah, blah, blah. But she was crossing the line and he wasn't doing anything about it. So I sort of felt like I had to be like, okay, you're not messaging her anymore. The message that I saw that made me say, stop messaging her, like, you're not allowed to do that anymore, was she was basically telling him how, like, some guy had pinched her bum when she was out, which is sexual assault, I'm sorry. I do feel bad for her that that happened, but the way she explained it to Rick was like, she was like, oh yeah, this happened, but if it was you that had done it, I wouldn't have minded. Which, you know, talk, sitting here as a 26 year old woman saying that, I realized that it, this was children having a conversation, like who the fuck says that, you know? But she was literally like 14 years old. And that was what made me be like, right, that's it. You're not speaking to her anymore. And as far as I knew, he'd stopped speaking to her. But this one particular day when he was around my house, I, went on his phone because he had facebook on his phone right but it wasn't like as in the facebook app that you have on an iphone it was like i think he i don't think he had an iphone but i think he had a phone where you could go on the internet so i basically went on to the facebook website on his internet browser and i went on to his messages and i went on to his archived messages which are messages that have been deleted from your like actual message board sort of thing and when I went on to that, I saw that he'd still been messaging her, but he'd just been deleting the messages so that I wouldn't see them. Now, it's one thing to allow a girl to message you and flirt with you and not do anything about it. And then when your girlfriend says, okay, stop doing this, you say, okay, and stop doing it. But it is quite another to literally carry on doing it and actively try and hide it from your girlfriend. That says to me that you're guilty of something because why the fuck would you hide it from me? Also, if I've told you to stop speaking to her because I'm uncomfortable with it, why would you then do it? Especially after you have stopped me from speaking to anyone. It's so toxic, honestly. Like, even talking about it now makes me angry because I think back to it and I'm like, I don't know why I even stayed with this boy because realistically, I never loved him, which sounds awful to say, but I just didn't. I wasn't in a position to fall in love again when I was with him. But it was a case of he's my boyfriend and he's disrespecting me sort of thing and as someone that had been cheated on before i wasn't gonna allow it to happen again i literally showed him the messages that he deleted and when you've been doing this and he was like no i haven't i know boys deny shit right but how can you actually deny it when the evidence is in front of your fucking face i was literally holding his phone going rick i can see like literally you can see you have eyes you can see what i'm showing you right now how can you stand there and say you haven't done it when the evidence is literally in front of both of our faces and all he kept saying was i haven't done it meg i haven't done it i can't believe you think i'd do that it was really odd behavior because he was literally acting like i didn't have any evidence and like it was just a suspicion but I was standing there with his fucking phone in my hand with the messages on the screen and in his archive to show that he'd deleted them. And he still was denying it. And all he kept saying was, I haven't done it. I can't believe you think I'd do it. And it was like he was a robot that was stuck on repeat. He just couldn't say anything else apart from I haven't done it. It was bizarre. To this day, I've never actually experienced anything quite as bizarre as that situation. Because in the past, when I've caught boyfriends that have done shit, They've denied it until I've shown them the evidence and then they've gone, oh, okay, yeah, I did do it. Because you've got no choice. You've got the evidence in front of your fucking eye. You can't carry on denying it. Honestly, thinking back to it, I can't even remember how it got resolved. Because how can, it, how can you possibly resolve something with someone that's refusing to admit they've done it even though the evidence is in front of their eyes? I could have literally shown him CCTV footage of him doing something wrong and he still would have been like, no, I, that's not me. I didn't do that. If there are any girls watching this who have a boyfriend like this, get out because that is toxic behavior that is literally it's it's almost gaslighting because he's trying he was trying to make me think i was going insane and that i was almost seeing things i guess and he was also trying to make me he was trying to say that i'm a bad girlfriend for thinking he would do that 
but it wasn't a case of me thinking it, it was a case of I can fucking see that you've done it, I've literally got it right in front of me. Because before I saw that I didn't think he would do that, I thought that he'd stop messaging her and I trusted that. I don't know what made me want to go on to his archive messages, I guess because with situations with my ex-boyfriend I'd had to go on to deleted messages to see what he was actually up to. So maybe that was what it was, I don't know, but whatever it was, I'm glad I did because I then saw that he'd still been messaging this girl that flirted with him all the time. I was fuming and I wish I could remember this day in detail, but I can't remember what happened after that. I can't remember how we made up, but we did because this was like a month into our relationship and we stayed together for, I think we were together for eight months in total, which I know isn't even that long, but it bloody felt like about four years, trust me. But it must have been resolved, God knows how, but I do know that he still didn't admit to doing it. I think I just got to a point where I was going insane. I, was, I couldn't say anything else. I couldn't go anywhere else with the conversation because what can you say to someone that's just profusely denying that they've done something? I mean, that was first of many psychotic episodes to come, I guess. Anyway, Hans, as we all know, I can't tell a story in one go because I like to go into a lot of detail and talk a lot about things so obviously I am gonna split this story into a number of parts I'm not sure how many just yet probably not as many as the last one but yeah I thought I would end it on that because I guess that was the first time that I ever realized how I don't know how deluded he was I guess or how desperate he was to try and shift the blame off of himself um, and that was only like a month or so into our relationship so and also I feel like obviously I had full intentions of telling the story but I feel like now that I've sat here to tell it there's a lot that I can't remember about it so I feel like I want to go away and I guess kind of remember the timeline of events and you know try and remember some more things in detail so that I can talk to you about them because this was a very controlling and possessive relationship and it was very emotionally abusive and I did become a shell of my former self when I was with this boy. And I realised like everything I've said so far maybe doesn't express that as much. But yeah, I didn't really know. This story doesn't really have as many good cliffhanger bits where I can end it as the last story did. So I'm going to end it here because obviously I don't want the video to be too long. Um, I will do a part two, obviously, um, maybe in like a month's time. Uh, I'll try and be consistent with it like I was with my last story time. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the story so far in the comments down below. If you did enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.